This week on Tasty Utah, we're visiting Antica Forma, a restaurant cooking up classic Neapolitan style pizzas. They've imported their wood burning oven all the way from Italy, and they have their very own pizziolo, a certified master pizza chef, making certain every dish they offer has care and Italian culture as the key ingredients. Taste Utah is more than your typical food show. It's about local flavor, from roots through authentically Utah restaurants. It's the people and the places that make Utah a dining destination. There's so much soil and earth to uncover and still so many great Utah restaurants to savor. We bring you the stories and we spread the love. The best thing about Utah, the views along the way, they're not bad either. We're not afraid to get our hands just a little dirty. Food is a necessity, and it's how we create it and share it and experience it together that truly shapes our community. Whether you're choosing to dine in our dining rooms, order to go, or get delivery, you always have a seat at this table. Are you ready to taste Utah? are in sunny Moab. Moab is an adventure capital um, of the world. So you can slick rock, you can visit arches, canyon lands, and guess what? You can fill up on authentic Italian Neapolitan style pizza. We're gonna introduce you to Antica Forma. We're gonna meet Jody and Israel, basically a dream team that are making sure that you're gonna enjoy pizza all the time. Oh, what time is it? It's pizza time. Let's do this. Jody, how are you? Good. How are you, Katie? Oh my gosh, I've been out adventuring. I've been doing the jeeping. I hiked the Delicate Arch. I camped in Canyonlands. I've worked up an appetite. I'm here at Antica Forma. So excited. Come on in. Israel has prepared a feast for you, fit for an Italian queen. So come on in. All right. I love it. You called me queen. You had me there. You were not joking me when you said that Israel had, wait, like spent the morning just crafting some beautiful um, menu items for us. This is unreal. Uh, Israel, will you tell us what we have on the table? So right here we have a capanna pizza, okay. which is made with buffalo mozzarella, okay. grape tomatoes, basil, calamata olives, grated cheese. That's, nice. And right here we have a girella. It's made with uh, a girella? girella. Yeah, it's a sheet of mozzarella. Okay. We stuff it with pesto, roasted peppers, and artichokes. Oh my gosh, that looks unbelievable. And then just a little bit of uh, a drizzle arugula. of olive oil and, and some arugula. That's beautiful. This is our um, fettuccine with shrimp, mussels, and calamari. And right here we have the Primavera pizza, uh, which is made with roasted balsamic tomatoes, some spinach, prosciutto, and it's, it's finished with some Parmesan cheese. Beautiful, yes. and of course the fresh mozzarella. The fresh mozzarella yeah. that we make in, in house, yes. Yum, and then I know this is tiramisu, but that <laughs> looks unbelievable. Yes, so that's the classic uh, tiramisu. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your background in history. I'm gonna dive in. So my part of the story is finding a world-class chef in New York okay. and convincing him to come to Vernal, Utah first. Uh, we opened the first restaurant restaurant in Vernal okay. uh, six years ago. Okay. And then three years ago, we opened this restaurant. I met Israel in New York and, and had his pizza and I was just flabbergasted. I, uh, unbelievable pizza. And the night that I met him, when we left the restaurant, I said, Izzy, why don't you come to Vernal, Utah and we'll open a restaurant together. And he said, I might be interested. Israel, what are you doing that's different to create this extraordinary pizza? I mean, this is a very classic, traditional, right. Italian, Neapolitan style pizza, yeah? When I was, when I was younger, I, I started cooking uh, New York style pizzas and, you know, like Chicago style and all mm -hmm. that stuff. A few years later, I got introduced to the Neapolitan, Neapolitan pizza. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I fell in love with it because um, they, they keep the tradition so that you have to make your mozzarella from scratch, you have to make your dough in a certain way, you have to let it rise for like 24 hours, and I love those things. You 
immigrated from Mexico yes. when you were 16, yes. and you started cooking in New York City when you were 16 years old. Yes. New York City is the place where, when chefs want to go educate themselves, they go cook there. Like I said, when I was young, I was like all over, like, you know, even the five boroughs, I work in all five boroughs, like Brooklyn, all Bronx. All five so, of the boroughs, yeah. that's so yeah. cool. I always wanted to do something else besides, besides cooking, but for some reason I always went back. Even uh, when I tried to like, to be a server, they would need somebody in the back of the kitchen and uh, you know, I know how like, to cook, oh, so I was like, <laughs> so I would always end, end up uh, cooking and, and it, it would always be pizza. You have learned how to craft every single kind of pizza yes. that there is. You know, Chicago is deep dish. New York is very traditional with almost like that and crunch It's, it's sold by, by the slice. Yeah, the size of your yeah. head, you know, because yes. that's just how they roll. Yeah. And then Neapolitan style pizza, which is this beautiful traditional pizza of, Na of Napoli or Naples. Israel's training. Uh, he was trained by a man that owns one of the oldest pizzerias in Naples. No way! He actually he went there too. Yes, I to, I, I, I went there um, year before last, oh before COVID hit. We went to Italy, Naples. To Naples, and I went yeah. to the restaurant. The owner of the restaurant is Don Antonio's, and there's his New York restaurant. It's called Don Antonio's. That's where Izzy got his training. Oh my goodness! Yeah. And this amazing partnership was forged. Yes. Yes. It's so fun to get to sit and get to chat with you and, and know the history and the origins because you come in here and the food is so good and you have this imported pizza oven from Italy, Italy, Italy. Naples. from Naples yeah. and now you can come and really enjoy a taste of Italy. Yes. Via Vernal, via New York from Mexico. It's so yes. special. <laughs> I also love that you have a great libation menu. So you've got like high west whiskey, but you've also got beautiful Prosecco and wine. And of course, local beer. We featured Moab Brewery in our very first season of Taste Utah. Cool. And so oh. we love oh. it. You have to support yeah. them, right? Yes. They're right yes. down the street. Yes. Yeah, they're, they're oh just gosh. down the street. And that's kind yeah. of a cool story about Moab too, is the food community here. You're all so expansive, like you want to share and you want to help one another and support one another yep. and that's yeah. awesome. And your name is really special. So will you just give us the insight as to why uh, why you decided to name yourself? The name yourself? of Antica Forma? Yeah, so Antica Forma means uh, the, the old form or yeah. the old way. So I decided to name it uh, like that because that's what we do here. We, you know, we do everything the old, the old way. You know, this was created hundreds of years ago, well, I mean hundreds of years ago, yeah. and they still do it the same way. Uh, actually, back then, uh, the, you know, uh, there was no tomatoes in Europe, uh, you know, when Europeans migrated to, to, to America, uh, they imported tomatoes from Peru, I believe. Oh my gosh. Peru, and then, uh, so at the beginning, they used to use only like uh, lard, Mm -hmm. Lard and just like uh, pecorino cheese, like ready cheese, and that. But there was no tomatoes, no tomato sauce on the pizza. Uh, at first, those ovens were made to bake uh, bread, and they will use a piece of uh, flat bread just to to kind of clean the oven. But they didn't want to waste the bread, so they decided to, you know, to add something and eat it. So that's how. It's literally my <laughs> favorite part of Italian culture. I mean, can you imagine? our society today without pizza. And it's exactly. so special. It's what Americans are now sort of shifting toward is the yeah. sustainability, but it's like ingrained in what you're already doing here. Like it makes me emotional because it's so important. It's important to know where our food comes from. It's important to pay homage to it and use every bit that we can and make sure that we're not over consuming. And, um, what a special, special delight and treat that you are offering us. Thank um, you. One of my favorite things to do is to pop back in the kitchen and see how things are made. I mean, if you're making mozzarella in house, yes. yes, would you well, show me yeah, how you definitely. do it? We'll take you to the back and we'll uh, we'll make some fresh mozzarella. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay, awesome. I'll put my mask back on and then Jody. Yeah. Um, I'll stay here and finish. I was eating. gonna say this all <laughs> better be clean by it. the time we got back. Okay, good, good. Okay, You're ready, Israel? Let's, let's do let's, it. Let's do it.
All right, Israel, you're gonna teach me how to make fresh mozzarella. I'm so excited. You're gonna let me help, so I'm gonna put some gloves on. Uh, you know. Yeah, so that's a, a cheese slicer. Okay. So um, what we have here is uh, mozzarella curd. Okay. So we use mozzarella curd because it helps us cut the process in half. Okay. Um, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna slice it right here okay. with this guitar. We're just gonna push down like this with your hand. Nice, firm. Yes, just like that. And don't worry, you won't cut your... Yeah, you should I cut, try it? Yeah, the, uh, yes, you can. On this one? Yeah, yep. And just I go push, this just, way? Yeah. Okay, and just get like some pressure on all sides of it. Yes, and just kind of on the pins, side to side. And there you go. Boom, perfect. Now we're gonna put the cheese curd in here. This huge dish, this is like um, the dish I have at my house that I eat cereal <laughs> like. Just kidding. The most important part of this process is hot water, right? Because that's hot what makes water, the cheese yes. malleable. Uh, yeah, so your, your water, you gotta make sure it's uh, boiling. Hot. Yep. Uh, because it's, if it's too cold, then it, it, you know, it'll be hard to, to stretch the, it. The, the cheese yeah. is not gonna yeah. melt. You put about between 14 to 16 grams of salt for each pound. Okay. Okay, so I'm uh, just gonna add that salt to, to it. Turn that around nice and liberally. Yes. Right here. And then we're ready for the hot water. Now you wanna go, you wanna go around first. Okay. Because you don't wanna put all the hot water in the middle. So then it just because, like congeal together, yeah? Yeah, because the, if, if you put everything in the middle, then all the fat from the cheese will, you know, will come out, and you yeah. don't want that. You say you want to go around slowly. Because you're not trying to cook the cheese. Yes, you're just trying you, to make you, it pliable. Yes. And you have to have like very tempered hands to do this. Oh right? yes. So, so sometimes, oh my some, gosh, some yeah. Italian people they don't even use gloves. That's, they yeah. They, they just use bare hands. Bare hands, and yeah. that's the thing. I mean, you yeah. get conditioned to it, and it's, yes. then it's not so hot. Yeah. So now we're gonna use this thing here. Okay. And we're gonna start. Just moving it back and forth. Yeah. First, you wanna just, you know, go like this. Okay. Side to side. And then when it starts becoming together, then you can, you, you start stretching. Okay. And you are like, you're picking it up, making sure it's not just clumping in one area. Right. I mean, so now that see, is like see everything. The, That's delicious. If you ever do this at home, make yeah. sure you cut your your cheese, your curd evenly. Yeah. So you're not struggling. I mean, having that took chip. no time at all. That came together so quickly. Yes. Nice. See how's? Yeah. What so, are you looking for here? As so far as we, we want finish? that uh, silky finish okay. here. You want to make sure there's no no chunks of no chunks curd. Of curd. Oh, okay. And, yeah. And so you really are like your quality control right Yes. Now. Grab it like this. Grab it this way. And you want to put your hand like that. Okay. You want to kind of roll it like that. Tuck it in. And then you've got a ball. And then you've got a ball. And then you want to cut it okay. by squeezing really hard. Okay. Like that. And that's here. Yeah, like this. That's one time I would love to. I'm like okay. so nervous, but yeah. I do want to. Okay, so okay. just so right then. Go like and, that. And just fold it. Fold it. Yes. Fold it. Yeah, now just try. And then just kind of try tucking it all in. Yes. Tucking it all in. Tucking it all in. Mm -hmm. and then Perfect. And then squeeze really hard. Really, really hard. Just, there like, you go. Oh, Perfect. Like that? Is yeah. that really? Yeah. Oh, it feels so cool Good in my job. hands too. Israel, it would be really fun, I think, to take this fresh moths and like make a pizza. Would you be up for it? Absolutely. Okay. We actually we have a little surprise for you. I uh, love surprises. Okay. We'll leave this leave here this for a minute. Here. Okay. We'll, and we'll, we'll take some of this mozzarella. Yeah to go make a pizza. Let's do it. Okay, Israel, so we're here to make some pizza. You said you have a special surprise for yes. me. Yes. So you're making your dough in-house. Yes. Are you making it every day? Uh, we make dough today for tomorrow. And then you slide, you segment it into little dough balls. 
before, like we when when you're making the dough balls, you put it in the box, okay. and then you just let it sit there. We don't refrigerate it. We okay. keep it just at room temperature nice. to like 65 degrees. We actually we have a room, uh, the the dough room, the dough room. The door room. So that's where I like to keep it. So I don't like to put it in the refrigerator yeah. because you get a lot of you know a lot a lot of moist, then your yeah. dough gets a little too much water. I so, need a dough room in my house. Like that's amazing. <laughs> okay, yes. awesome. So. so so here's what it looks like. Okay. Oh, that's, beautiful. That's, that's how it looks like. Okay. So we're gonna again take a little spatula. You you're gonna help me do this, okay? Yes, I would okay. love to. Oh my so gosh. I'm okay. Gonna, first step, you wanna put some flour around the dough. Okay. And you then you wanna scoop it out, and you wanna make sure you wanna go all the way down. Yeah. So you, you don't can want so you it can cut stick. it. Then you, you use the corners here. Nice. So you go all the way like that to the bottom, and okay. then you want to go fast with this. Yeah. Okay? You want to do one? Yeah, I would love okay. to. Okay. Yeah. Just on this one? Yeah, just cut that. So just uh, yeah. cut that in there, and then cut that in there. Uh, yes, perfect. And then just fast. Yeah. Yep, perfect. Ish. And then <laughs> like that. Yeah, just right there. Push this to the side and cover okay. it. Okay, perfect. perfect. Okay. First, we want to kind of shape it, just kind of pinch, push the corners in, then drop it on the flour. Okay. Oh my gosh, it's so light and so fluffy. <laughs> yes, and then okay. bring it back to you a little bit. Okay. I want to push all the uh, air that's in the dough to the, to the rim. Okay. So you want to go slowly like this. Yeah, you can feel the, the air. Yes. Okay. You see those bubbles? That's a good sign. Okay, I'm doing and a good job. Yes. Okay. So now you want to flip it over. And do the same thing. Okay. If you have a good dough, then you don't really have to worry about, you know, details because you're already your dough you're is already with a good yes. product already. Yes. So, like a lot of times, I, I tell my guys, don't worry if you don't get it, you know, perfectly round. Uh, but what I care about is the the, the product itself, like yeah. the, the dough. In this case, the dough. Now we got the sauce right here. Okay. And uh, I really love this pizza because it has, we're gonna add some caramelized onions. Yeah. And some basil, some grated cheese, okay. and the fresh mozzarella that we just made in the oh back gosh, of the I'm kitchen. I'm so excited. And, and then we're gonna finish it up with some prosciutto at the end. Okay. So you get a little bit of the, a little bit of the uh, uh, saltiness from the prosciutto and a little of the sweetness from the balsamic this is so fun. Okay. Uh, onions. So I'm gonna put on my pizza. Okay. Uh, about this much. Okay. Right in the center. Make okay. Sure. And then you're gonna go like this. You're gonna oh my rack, gosh, it smells so good. It I around can like smell this. It. Yeah. And Beautiful. That's it. Now you do yours. Oh my gosh. Okay. Here we go. Like that much? Yes. Okay. And just put it in the center. Perfect. Yeah, now just go around. Just go, go with the spoon like this. Perfect. Good like job. That? Yep, okay. perfect. Now we're gonna put some basil. Oh my gosh, it smells so, so good. Um, some people rather put add the basil at the end. Some people like it before, like, but I like to do it before because it kind of infuses all the flavors. While you're cooking it. Yeah, I like so, that. We're going to add some onions here. So, so I like to put a look, you know, just just the right amount. So you, so when you take a bite, you you taste in the sauce, you taste in the cheese. You're getting you, all of all, the flavors. All of it, you know. Uh, I just like to add a little bit of the uh, grated cheese here. Oh and some of the mozzarella that we just made. Okay. We're just gonna grab this chunk and you can grab that one. That's and just kinda, just kinda pinch, pinch it like this. Oh my gosh. See awesome. how you still have a little bit of the juice in there? Yeah, which is like so nice. You want yes. it, they want that moisture, right? Yes. You wanna drizzle it around on a spiral. Perfect. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yours. A little drizzle in a spiral. Do you start from the inside out? Yes. And work yourself out. There you go. Perfect. Okay. Now it's ready to go in the oven. Okay. Okay. Just gonna go like this. And then. Let's 
stretch it. Oh, stretch look at that. Like this. That technique, it's so good. <laughs> yes. And it's like paper thin, that's the thing. You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna wrap it right there. It takes only one minute and then 20 seconds to cook a pizza. I think I did Which, all uh, right, yeah? Ish? That's good, just okay. maybe add a little bit here. A little bit there, okay. And yeah. okay. it's ready to go in the oven. Just put it right over. Right there. Nice. There That's some go. good technique. Yes. So you want to do a couple of turns and make sure it's evenly cooked. And those bubbles are occurring because you pushed all the air in yes. the pockets. This it's yes. so cool. So, there you go. First one. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Oh, good. Mine's doing pretty good in there. Yeah. Like yeah. The, I look, didn't look. think I did so well with the air pockets and the crust, but it looks pretty you good. You want to try? On the plate? Yes. Oh, my it's gosh. I feel slow, so slow, much slow, pressure slow. right now. Slow. There you go. Good job. <laughs> now, you want to type it with some prosciutto? Oh, prosciutto. That's mine. Since it's yours and I like you, I'll give you some more. <laughs> okay. Just gonna grease a little bit of just a little bit of oil. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm. That's it. Alright, this is amazing. Let's do you wanna each have a piece of yeah. my pizza? Yeah. Okay, that's so that, that's that's your pizza, mm -hmm. right? So you have okay. a slice and I will have a slice. And we will just say cheers. And this has Pe been one of the most fun episodes thank, that I've ever you. shot. So cheers. Pizza cheers. Yeah, exactly.